Hello everyone, my name is Caden Herring and I'm a consultant at Encryption Consulting. Encryption Consulting covers all the aspects of data protection landscape and we help our clients in understanding and implementing cybersecurity models respective to their needs. So in today's video we'll be discussing an important encryption technique, RSA. RSA is a widely used encryption algorithm with various real world use cases. Uh, so let's get started. RSA stands for Rivas Shamir Adelman, which are the three people that came together to invent it. Uh, it's an asymmetric encryption algorithm uh, where public and private keys are used uh, to encrypt the data. Uh, with asymmetric encryption, it uses a key pair that is mathematically linked to encrypt and decrypt uh, called the public and private key. The public key is accessible to anyone, uh, but the private key is a secret only known by the key pair creators. So uh, with RSA, either the public or private key can encrypt the data, but only the other key can decrypt it. This is one of the reasons why RSA is the most used asymmetric uh, encryption algorithm. So how does it work? Uh, RSA uh, is a process used for two different tasks. The first one is key generation, and the second one is performing the encryption or the decryption. So let's take a look at a high level on the key generation process in RSA. So as you can see, we've created a detailed flowchart. Uh, so during the key generation, two prime numbers are taken and mathematical functions are applied to arrive at two strong strings, which are the public key and the private key in RSA. These keys are used to encrypt the plain text into cipher text, which is the most important part of encryption. Uh, modulus function is applied on the plain text, which converts it into cipher text. Cipher text is, the, is, the, is complex to understand for any intruder who tries to steal it from the organization or the user sending it. Uh, and similarly, cipher text can be decrypted by using the private key of the user. The private key, when applied uh, onto the cipher text, converts it into the plain text. So uh, during transit, it's in the cipher text, so it's useless to anyone that gets a hold of it. These keys are used to encrypt the plain text into cipher text. Modulus function is applied on the plain text, which converts it into cipher text. Cipher text is complex to understand for any intruder who tries to steal it. So similar, similarly, cipher text can be decrypted using the private key of the user. Private key, when applied onto the cipher text, converts it into plain text again by applying the mod function. All right, so let's move on to some advantages of RSA. There are several real-time use cases for RSA. It helps in performing encryption without much hassle and also helps in authenticating the user. Four major advantages are identified in this video. So starting with uh, the elimination of key sharing. So it's the best advantage to this because uh, cryptography key usage is reversed in the RSA procedure for encryption and decryption. So unlike signature verification, RSA leverages the receiver's public key to encrypt the data and receiver's private key is used to decrypt the data. Thus, there is no need to exchange any keys in RSA. With no exchange in keys, the risk of hackers stealing keys is eliminated. And then for proof of authenticity, it's a major advantage of RSA. Certificates can be used to verify the owner of the public key as the key pair owner who signs the data with their private key. This authenticates the key pair owner as a trusted source of information. And then with faster encryption, that's the next noted advantage uh, since it's significantly faster than other algorithms such as DSA. And then next comes proof of data integrity. Code signing is also done with RSA. To ensure the owner is not sending dangerous or incorrect code to a buyer, the code is signed with the private key of the code creator. This verifies that the code has not been edited maliciously in traffic uh, and that the cr code creator verifies the actual usage of the code. Other than these advantages, RSA was used with TLS, uh, Transport Layer Security, to secure connections between two individuals. So for some vulnerabilities, uh, though viable in many circumstances, there's still a number of them uh, in RSA that can be exploited. And one of these is the implementation of a long key in uh, encryption algorithms like this. Algorithms like AES are unbreakable, while RSA relies on the size of its key to be difficult to break. So uh, with weak number generators too, uh, when organizations use weak random number generators, then the prime numbers created by them are much easier to factor, thus giving the attackers an easier time of cracking the algorithm. Uh, with uh, sometimes weak key generation can be a problem because RSA keys have certain requirements relating to their generation. 
Uh, if the prime numbers are too close or if one of the numbers making up the private key is too small, then the key can be uh, solved for much faster. Uh, and side channel attacks are a method of attack that take advantage of the system running the encryption algorithm as opposed to the algorithm itself. Attackers can analyze the power being used, use branch prediction analysis, or use timing attacks to find ways to ascertain the key use in the algorithm, so that compromises the data. So, it's not unbreakable. Uh, algorithms like AES are, though, uh, while RSA relies on the size of its key. Uh, so, but the longer the RSA key, the more secure it is, giving prime factorization. Uh, researchers managed to crack uh, a 768-bit key but it took them two years and thousands of man hours. So unless absurd amounts of computing power and time and manpower are involved, RSA keys, uh, the current standard lengths are usually safe. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you want to know more, there's more videos on our playlist where we cover other uh, topics like this.